Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN. This is part three for this news bulletin today, Friday, October 19th, 2012. I'm Darko, my website is ggnonline.com and on YouTube, ddarko2012, ddarko2013. All the headlines and links will be posted in YouTube's video description. We left off with Iran and now I'm gonna cover Israel. U.S. troops arrive in Israel for the three-week missile defense drill, largest U.S.-Israeli exercise in history. This is the U, uh, first U.S. troops are arriving in Israel today, part of a buildup for what officials are calling the single largest U.S.-Israeli military exercise in history, a drill that will last three weeks and include 3,500 U.S. troops in Israel and Europe. The drill was initially planned for earlier this year, but was postponed because of regional instability. There was belief that the postponement was meant to show the U.S. opposition to Israel's initial ambition to start the war ahead of the U.S. presidential election. Then Tel Aviv approves building 800 new settlements in East El Quds. They approved 800 new illegal settlements in Jerusalem, which tenders for construction expected to be announced within a few months as an NGO. More than half a million Israelis live in over 120 settlements built since 1967. Israeli occupation of the Palestinian territories of the West Bank and illegally annex East El Quds. These settlements are considered illegal by the United Nations in most countries as those territories were captured by Israel in the war in 1967 are hence seen as being subject to the Geneva Conventions, which forbids construction on occupied lands. You have thousands of, of Israeli Bedouins protesting against home demolitions. Some 2,000 Bedouins from the village of Bur Hada in southern Israel's Negev Desert on Thursday demanded that the state rescind recent demolition orders against a number of homes. They had signs saying no to destruction, yes to recognition. A director of the Legal Center for Minority Rights says not only do they want to demolish the houses, none of the residents have permits to build new houses. While the media is busy with the elections, the state has opened a war of destruction against the Bedouin villages, saying that people are afraid they won't have a roof over their heads. Israel threatens aid ships uh, seeking to deliver food to Gaza. Ambassador demands UN intervention to prevent food from being delivered. The Finnish flagged Swedish aid ship Estelle is looking to near the Gaza Strip in the next few days, capping off a summer long sail around Europe to raise awareness for the blockade. The ship is loaded with food, which has Israelis typically furious, but none more so than the ambassador to the United Nations, Ron Prosser, who penned a letter to Ban Ki moon claiming the Swedes on board the ship were less moral than Viking raiders and demanding international military intervention to prevent the food from being delivered. It says Israeli officials say they intend to militarily keep the ship away from the Gaza coast, which they have with past ships, but it goes on here and it says that uh, with this recent letter and this week's revelation that Israeli military has been trying to limit the number of calories of food allowed in the Gaza Strip, it may be hard to do. Then we have this. I found Jason Alexander Seinfeld urges old Jews to vote Obama Actor best known as George Costanza, Costanza on Seinfeld is campaigning for the president across the United States. He says some of them, he goes on, he says, I'm going to talk to some old Jews. Some of them think Obama is not pro-Israel. He is very pro-Israel, and I have to bring them over from the other side, he told laughing. Uh, the la Alexander joins a number of other celebrity Obama supporters, including Eva Longoria, Sarah Silverman, Scarlett Johansson, I think Bruce Springsteen lately. So he's getting a lot of... Uh, a lot of support. I think uh, Jay-Z, too. Uh, bashed by Obama and Romney at debate, China shows its patience is wearing thin. In the aftermath of the U.S. debate that included blistering accusations about unfair Chinese economic practices, a commentary carried out by China's Xinhua Newswire on Wednesday warned that targeting its country's products or currency would risk a trade war. They said such a scenario would ultimately bury, talking about Romney, his other promises, and not least the one to jumpstart the sluggish U.S. economic growth. The Chinese organizations, news organizations pub published several pieces lately complaining about U.S.-China bashing this election season. And China holds a naval drill near disputed islands in East China Sea. Japan and U.S. just had their own little drill as well, so a lot of um, posturing going on right now in the East China Sea in a bid to practice defending territorial sovereignty as Japan's Navy marks its 60th anniversary. An air-sea battle, operational strategy to defeat potential foes from October 19th. It says the fact that the air-sea battle was initially a classified um, program of the Air Force and Navy created a deal of speculation. In the absence of other information, commenters elevated it to a strategy focused on China. The journalist and think tank analysts speculated 
it would start a strike campaign by long-range bombers and submarines deep into China to blind its defenses. This discussion has created significant strategic confusion for the United States. It offers a point-of-departure concept designed to maintain a stable military balance in the Western Pacific theater, one that offsets uh, basically China's army and that, rapidly improving the anti access area denial capabilities. It says, we have titled this concept Air Sea Battle in recognition that this theater of operations is dominated by naval and air forces in the domains of space and cyberspace. Of course, drones and stuff like that and special forces. North Korea threatened South with merciless military strike. On South Korean territory, if army defectors living in South Korea scatter anti-Pyongyang leaflets from balloons over the border, which they've done before, I doubt they're going to follow up with this, but they say there'll be a merciless military strike by the Western Front, which will be put into practice without warning if they do it again. CIA's seeking to expand drone fleet, say officials. The CIA, which is currently responsible for the drone attacks in Yemen, Pakistan, and other places, is urging the White House to approve a significant expansion of the agency's fleet of armed drones, a move that would extend the spy service's decade-long transformation into a paramilitary force. They said it would bolster the ability to carry out these assassination strikes in Pakistan and Yemen, like I just mentioned, but it said but it could also uh, shift aircraft to emerging al-Qaeda threats in North Africa and other troubled spots. They're talking about uh, Somalia and that. I think they're, they've are they been doing drone strikes now in Somalia. Uh, when they do it, man, they kill about 25 people at least each strike. From October 18th, U.S. drones killed seven people in Yemen. According to the AP, officials said the number of those killed by at least three U.S. strikes could rise as body parts were found but not counted yet. The use of drone strikes in Yemen and Pakistan has been described by Leon Panetta as absolutely essential to our ability to defend Americans. Earlier this September, a U.S. drone strike killed 13 civilians, including three women and a child in Yemen, which sparked angry demonstrations in the country, which of course was right around the innocence of Muslims thing. And uh, I've been covering Yemen a lot lately. Um, they've sent tanks there. They've sent Marines there. Um, we have, what, nine suspects killed in U.S. drone strike against southern Yemen. Attack on farmhouse kills suspected local leader of al-Qaeda. So this uh, Shaddadi's name has come up in several past reports of clashes in Abiyan, almost always listed among the people presumed killed. Today's attack is just the latest in a string of U.S. attacks against the province where U.S. ground troops have been acting as advisors for the Yemen military offensive. The U.S. largely does not comment on the drone strikes, but will occasionally brag about one if they believe it has killed someone they have heard of before. Yemeni uh, MP says drones prepare the ground for al-Qaeda. The U.S. drone war is not only causing blowback, it's causing dangerous instability in Yemen. The Yemeni president is supported by Washington with money and weapons, in part because he allows the U.S. to bomb his country with drones. But Hadi might be losing domestic political support for his accommodative policies towards U.S. aggression. With public anger rising over the drone war, Yemeni politicians are sharply criticizing Hadi and the U.S. drone strikes. At first, people didn't talk, but after Rada, things have changed, said the parliamentarian, referring to the drone strike last month that we talked about, killed 12 civilians. These airstrikes prepare the ground for al-Qaeda and terrorism. A relative of one of the victims told Reuters, we are just farmers in our homes who are disturbed constantly in the middle of the night by American planes above. We want a solution, and we demand that Hadi pay attention to this issue. We want security and stability, but if they are going to disturb us, we'll disturb everyone too. These accounts are compatible with other commentary from Yemeni locals who say, people are afraid to go to weddings because whenever large groups of men gather, they are afraid a drone will hit them. Of course, they have the double taps when people come to rescue them. The drones come in and attack those people as well. So then to the Federal Reserve bomb plot, right? If the FBI both planned and thwarted a terrorist attack, who is the hero? It says the feds know what they're doing and they do it all the time. They said he's a big threat when he came here. However, it's unclear if he would have gotten as far as he did without help from the undercover FBI agents. FBI celebrates foiling its own terror plot again. Federal agents convinced a naive, violent, uh, inclined 21-year-old Bangladeshi that he was a member of Al-Qaeda giving the dupe fake bombs to blow up the Federal Reserve Bank of New York before swarming in and arresting him on October 17th. As has become typical, government officials scrambled to put out the press releases, patting themselves on the back for their work for protecting the homeland. 
In reality, however, there was no Al-Qaeda threat. There was no threat, there was no bombs, and the only alleged plot the FBI foiled was the one it helped hatch with its dupe quasi Muhammad, whatever, right? Like majority of recent domestic terror schemes against the U.S., the latest supposed, supposed operation was essentially was essentially run by authorities from start to finish. U.S. experts are slamming the FBI tactics of luring men to commit terror acts. The use of confidential informants to lure young Muslim men into committing an act of terror has been censored by counterterrorism and legal experts in the United States. It says it seems like almost like an elaborate piece of theater, says a law professor. He asked the question, would that person have taken that step but for the government's informants' involvement? Then a bloodthirsty Al-Qaeda wannabe update U.S. State Department granted New York terror plot or plotter a student visa. So via foreign policy, last December, the State Department issued a student visa to the Bangladeshi man arrested this week for trying to blow up the Federal Reserve building with what he thought was a thousand pound bomb. So this is kind of like the uh, underwear pants bomber who is on a no-fly list, got a visa and everything goes, right? So more billions for the fearless defenders of the homeland. The New York Post actually starts the article, a bloodthirsty Al-Qaeda wannabe. But his father says the New York bomb plot charge was false. He says that they were totally false and he's totally innocent. Breaking down repeatedly as he spoke to the correspondent, he said, I'm now requesting the Bangladeshi government to bring my innocent son back to the country. He said he went to the United States only to study, not to do any kind of that activity. He is only my son. Investigators Norman Mineta making us all have fingers stuck up our butts to go through airport security. I That's don't just to... you. No. <laughs> that doesn't happen to That doesn't happen to I, I do. You know that. I do. Well, well, I do look like a terrorist. I want to hear about what happens at Guantanamo, what happens at, at airports. That's another, no, like, no, Republican no. MacGuffin, this whole thing, like, the TSA is fucking us. You know oh, I mean? come like, on, you fly private. Be safe. Do you want to die on these airplanes? They go by you, they go like this. They grab your, your dick a little bit. It's not the end of the world. TSA removes X-ray body scanners from major airports. The TSA has been quietly removing its X-ray body scanners from major airports over the last few weeks and replacing them with machines that radiation experts believe are safer. And I knew they were going to say this. The TSA said they made a decision not because of safety concerns but to speed up checkpoints at busier airports. So, because they'll never concede that uh, that those things are doing damage. It means, though, that far fewer passengers will be exposed to radiation because the X-ray scanners are being moved to smaller airports. So that's great. We didn't see this coming. Researchers are building RoboCop policemen. Florida International University is trying to build a remote-operated law enforcement robot that will be controlled by disabled police officers. It says, would you like a bot on the beat? So it says here that the member of the U.S. Navy reserves to build telepresence robots that could patrol while being controlled by disabled police officers and military vets. In a sense, they would be hybrid man-machine cops like RoboCop. The telebot has to look intimidating and authoritative enough so that people obey its commands because, of course, it's not the telebot telling you what to do. It's the disabled police officer controlling the telebot. On the flip side, it has to be approachable enough so that a lost three-year-old feels comfortable coming up to the telebot and asking uh, for help to find her mom. This has already been going on from April 21st, 2012. Meet South Korea's new robotic prison guards. With incarcerations up, South Korea's latest robotic endeavor seeks to alleviate stress of overworked prison guards by replacing them with robots. Then you have reverse engineered pacemaker transmitter enables anonymous assassination. So a pacemaker transmitter to make it possible to deliver deadly electro electronic shocks to pacemakers within 30 feet and rewrite their firmware. They can issue an 830 volt shock to the pacemaker using a laptop. It says that data could be used to load rogue firmware which could spread between pacemakers with the potential to commit mass murder. But this thing's already kind of already been around, right? January 6th, CIA secret weapon of assassination heart attack gun declassified. So heard of any heart attacks lately, and they're talking about CIA weapon that can penetrate clothing and leave nothing but a tiny red dot on the skin. They're talking about Andrew Breibart. The court has ruled that mobile phones can give you a tumor. This is in Italy, and this is even though British scientists have claimed there is insufficient evidence to prove any link to mobile phones. Pediatricians call for stricter gun laws to protect kids. They reiterate that kids and teens are at risk if they have access to guns. Most children who get injured or killed from firearms get their firearms from home. Well, that's because they're not told what they are. They're just told to be scared of them. 
When I saw the handle turn, I shot him. Home Alone Girl 12 shoots home intruder while hiding in the closet with a gun. You know about the blind man being tasered by police, but what about British police getting a two-shot taser? This is GGN. Thank you.